Hey everyone, uh, I'm just going to walk you through the second half of our project, um, mainly looking at how to sort of handle messages, so I'll just give you an idea of how the app works in the moment. So, same as before, I make a new person. Right, upload a picture of them, save it, that usual jazz, right. log in, um, do a capital U or something, and maybe even a capital P. Yeah. Okay. What did I do? Did I do user one or something? I did. Okay. Oops, it is user one. Okay. Nope. Well, there we go. All right, we got there eventually. So I'm in. I can see. So this is the new bit that I've updated. I've got messages in here. Currently, this person's new, so I have no messages. So I will send a message. There's a drop down menu with all of my users currently in it. So. I'll send a message to Bob Jane. I'll say I love your tire of tires. Right. Click send. That's done. You'll see that there's nothing here because this is my inbox. Oh, that button doesn't work. I'll have to go back and fix that. And uh, I'll go out and I'll log in as um, Bob Jane. Right. Go into my messages and I have my message there ready to go. Yeah. Right. I can even send a message to myself. Yeah. Right. Refresh it and it's there, ready to go. I click delete. Would I like to delete my messages? I click delete. I refresh it, they're all gone. Right. But um, it will still have the other messages that are in there. So if I go Let's say I log in as somebody else. I'm assuming that I have messages in here for for John. And then I'll just send a new one. Uh, so just so you can see that uh, it only deletes that individual user. I'll send a message to Bob Jane and then one to myself. Right. It's there. I delete it and it's gone. And then if I were to log in as Bob Jane, you'll see that 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 his message is still there, so it won't um it won't affect anybody else's messages. You'll only be able to delete your own. Uh, so I'll quickly run you through the code on how that works. So. Starting on form five, the only thing you really need to know is the message box opens form six. Um, so this is uh, this is a little bit new. So I, I was sort of learning how to do this myself. Um, and this is a, a list view. So it's a specific object called the list view um, here. And I just saw from marking around that this is a good way to sort of list information. So you can split it into two columns. You can like resize those columns in um, this uh, setting section here. So you can add, um, these are my columns there. And you can actually resize the width in there as well as their name and things like that. So that's all the information that I've put in, which is those two columns and that's it. So then when I go to, uh, let's say, I'll show you form load first. So this comes up um, when form is open the first time. This is pretty standard stuff. You can see I'm accessing CSV file two from form one. So I decided to set up both my CSVs in here um, and then share them so that I could use them across the whole program. So I do that and then wait, where am I? Okay, so I access that messages CSV file, set it up for delimiters, read the commas, etc. Read in current rows string, and I should say the reason that I'm doing that one there is to um, skip the headings 
no, the headings have to come up. Until the, so while it's not the end of the data, I go through, I read the next row. Next row, uh, that next line is just me debugging, so I just left that out. Just, uh, that was me checking to see if it was matching properly. And then we say if current row zero, which if I open up my messages file, you'll see current row zero is the two column. Well, I'm not sure why it's done that. I'll have to fix that, that's okay. Hmm. Interesting. I must be adding the headings and forgetting about everything else. That's all right. Uh, anyway, you'll see that my two column has my sender, my from column is the, sorry, my two is the recipient, my from is the sender, and then the message is shown here, okay? So the column zero is this one here. Um, and I'm checking, does it match my active user? So I go to form four, you'll see active user is a shared variable. And it's actually shared if the username and password is effective. So essentially if they can log in, I'm sharing the user variable across all forms. So it's nice and easy for me to access that. Um, so if the active user matches uh, each row, so it's gonna iterate through that list of messages, every time it finds a match, what we're doing here is we're setting up a new row in our list view. So that's setting that up uh, and storing in the um, the first column being the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the sender is in there. And then the next column here, so it says new row dot sub items dot add. So this automatically adds this sub item. This will add the next one. So I can add data to the message column um, in that list view. Okay, so if you want to have multiple um, sub items, you would just add more of these lines in to add them in. So this adds in the sender, this adds in the message, and then that object gets added to our list view entirely. All right, which makes it readable. So that's that. Um, the next button on here, let's jump in here, um, is, so that was form load. All create is gonna do is just open up form seven, so we'll get to that in a moment. The refresh button actually clears all the items out of the list view, but it should keep the headers. If you do list view to items dot clear, it should keep the headers there. Then again, I'm just reading through the CSV file and it's basically the same code as form load um, if it's a match like I skip the headings if it's a match then I add those items back in again so really form load and um, that refresh button are almost identical they essentially are uh, I've got delete which is starts off with a, a sort of a customized dialog box so if um, so this is probably a little bit different to how we've done some things. Uh, so it says uh, we dim answer as a dialogue result, which is essentially what is clicked on our dialogue box. We make that equal to the message box, message box show. This is the message that'll pop up. This is the title. And then you can actually add buttons. So there's actually more parameters that can be added into message box dot show. We normally just do the message, but you can actually add in the title and the buttons. So that's uh, something worth mentioning. If you go here, it's got yes, no, but there are actually a couple of different ones. So you can do yes, no, cancel, okay, cancel, abort, try, ignore, cancel, try, continue. There's a few options there, but we'll just stick with yes, no for now, because that suits what we want. Um, so if they say they want to delete their messages, so if they say yes, then I'm setting up a string that just contains the headings, okay? Um, so there's that, du, 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 du. which I wonder, that's probably why, um, I wonder if that's why we're having issues with, uh, um, what do you call it? With the headings being added in multiple times. That's all right. I'll figure that out later. It still works for the moment. So anyway, 
Um, so we set up my reader to read in that messages file, set it up for delimiters, etc. Read in the current row until the end of the data. We're reading every single row, and all we're looking to see this time if the user does not. Uh, sorry, if the 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 two column does not match the current user, we save it in a string, meaning if it does, we're skipping this. And then at the end, we're overriding, um, we're overriding that file with our new string. So that's essentially what that's doing, is we're leaving out all of our messages sent to that user and saving all the rest of them to a file and then overriding the, um, the entire file. So that's, um, yeah. That's something. So I think if I'm if I'm thinking about this correctly, I imagine the the reason. Yeah, I don't think I need this line anymore. I think that's why I was having issues before. So I might just get rid of that and see if that fixes our problem, which is fine. Because um, yeah, I, I thought it wouldn't read the headings, but it should read the headings through here anyway. So we'll see. See if that fixes the problem. It might not. Um, yeah, and we're overriding that, so that's how that button works. So that's that, the back button. I don't think the back button works, but it, you know, it should just be a back button. Then we have this message here, which is our compose message button. Uh, I'll just load up form load, quickly walk you through this. So we're loading in our CSV file for our users this time, not our messages, all right? And all we're doing here is we're gonna read our files We've done this one here to um, skip the headings, right? And then it says, while my reader not end of data, we're just checking to see if, um, so this will repeat until the end of the user's file. We read it in and we're saying, if the combo box already has that value in it, just skip, but if not, we're gonna add it. So that should go through our users list and add them in. And hopefully if there are duplicates, it'll leave those out, would be ideal. Um, which seems a little bit redundant at the moment, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, that works. That populates our combo box with our users' names. Um, our next part of the form is the send button. So all the send button does is it loads up CSV form two, CSV file two, which is our messages. It takes our combo box item, our active user, and our message and saves it. And that matches the format that you can see in messages. So the combo box is the two, the from is the current user, and then the message is the message. Okay. So that sort of suits us in terms of what we're trying to do. Um, of course, we add true because we want to append it. Um, that's, yeah, worth mentioning. I think the... I should go back, the, the delete button has this as false because I want to overwrite the entire file. That's okay. So then it says sent and it actually closes that box so you don't have to muck around with that. And if you click the back button, it also closes that box. And that's how our messages work. Um, and yeah, I will just quickly show you the in here. I didn't mention it, but the delete button, you'll notice that this value is false instead of true, that's because we want to overwrite the file, not append. And hopefully, if I log in now and delete one of those messages, um, it will actually not add um, those multiple rows in. Click delete, good. So I'll just quickly check the file and make sure that worked. Yeah. Beautiful. And that's the program. All right. Thanks, everyone. Hope you got something valuable out of that. Bye.